Hi, everyone. This is Michelle Tracy Berger, creativity coach and author. And today I want to talk with you about something that is an area that we don't really look at very much when we're doing decluttering, but it's something that if we're more aware of, it can, I think, lead to better outcomes for some of us around the journey of decluttering. And that is waste anxiety. And waste anxiety is a term that has been popping up to talk about the constellation of feelings, the challenges around letting go of our stuff in that the worry and anxiety that we're creating more waste in the world. And waste anxiety is really a component of a much larger um, phenomena, we might say, which is called eco-anxiety. And that is a broad term that really relates to the stress and challenges and dread many human beings might feel around some of the environmental challenges that we're facing. So waste anxiety can manifest when we are looking to start to declutter our homes and we get very focused on, should I let this go? Is this going to contribute to more waste or pollution or things that we find that we don't want to do because we all are concerned about our climate and climate change and um, the impact of our actions on the environment. So this started becoming an issue for me over the last couple of years. And I would find that I would spend so much time worrying about the impact and then researching how to move forward with releasing an item that it was I was getting stuck. And I had to really think about what is the larger picture that I'm working with? What is my lar What are my larger goals? What are my, my larger aims? And how can I be ethically responsible as much as I can for certain items that I'm looking for new homes for, but not get frozen or stuck in the process? I don't, and I, I'm hoping that this resonates for some of you. So there are areas of items or types of items that we need to think a lot about in terms of finding them, you know, their next place. But for many of our items, we can feel that we can take action in finding them new homes without being, I think, overly debilitated or stuck or frustrated. It's not going to, and I had to tell myself this, it's not going to be perfect because our actions as human beings are never perfect. We just want to be as responsible as we can. And so this is where I think affirmations can come in really handy um, in terms of just getting us out of that frozen, debilitated mode to sort of say an affirmation. Affirmation, there, I've done a video about this in the decluttering journey, can be a pattern interrupter, right? So we can say something neutral or we can say something and or we can say something positive. So neutral would be like, I, I find the best home that I can for each item, right? A more positive affirmation would be um, in every day, in every way, my space is, is organized beautifully. Um, and I find great homes for all of my items, right? So I, I think that can, affirmations can be very helpful. I've also talked about emotional freedom technique um, to, and that is, um, we might say that's kind of acupressure for the body. So we're um, tapping on points of the body and, and those videos are available for you to look at. Um, and I, I think this is something we want to just think about and check in with ourselves. And in my declutter for creative people challenge, I have an amazing resource list that really supports people to find, try to find homes for some of the things so that it's not just going into the trash um, and not feeling, you know, um, that sense of dread about things to let go. The other piece though that we have to hold is that we just physically cannot hold on to if, if we have more items in our environment that is good for us, then it's not healthy for us 
to hold on to those environments indefinitely, right? That's not really helping us, you know, fulfill our mission in life, be, you know, the kind of person that we want to be when we are just holding on to them out of fear that it's going to so detrimentally affect our environment. So we want to find that balance. And I want to encourage you to think about that. If you don't know about the buy nothing groups, they are really, really helpful. I've relied on them in the last couple of years and, and the buy nothing groups are through your um, uh, region or county and you can go on there and you can receive things that other people are giving um, and you can gift things for free. It's all a free exchange for things that you want to let go of. And you would be so surprised about the things that you think no one's going to want this. Someone will want it in your community. And it's an amazing, amazing group. It's a national group. I think it might even be international, but I know in the United States, it's a national group. So you can find a buy nothing group and it's all about keeping things out of the landfill. So ideally we can also do that pattern interrupt, that affirmation so that we make good choices moving forward about what we're bringing into our home and also think about how to find great places for the things that we are trying to release and let go of. In my Declutter for Creative People Challenge, the enrollment is open and uh, there are people are saying and leaving amazing reviews. You can see all of that information below. It is a um, Feng Shui inspired challenge, meaning that Feng Shui is the Chinese art and philosophy of placement. And so it's really about inner transformation and creative fulfillment at that outer level as well. And people are calling this challenge easeful and fun and you know, finding so much direction in the videos that I provide and the affirmations and the intentionality of doing this declutter challenge. So check out all that information below and let me know if you've heard of this term waste anxiety, if you struggle with that, um, hit me up in the comments. Let me know some of your tips and tricks for how you are able to move forward to release those items that need to be released. I'll see you on the next video. Take care until then.